Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about finding the derivative of a function using the power rule. So hopefully at this point we all understand that a derivative is just the formula to find the slope of a tangent line at any given value of x. So there's going to be all different kinds of derivation methods that I can use to find the derivative of a function, and today we're just focusing on the power rule. So the power rule is mainly going to be used in polynomials where my function is of the form x to the n. So coefficient, variable, exponent. In order to find the derivative here, I take that exponent, n, multiply it by the coefficient in front, so I have nx, and then subtract that exponent by 1, so to the n minus 1. Let's talk about some tips for using the power rule. So I'm going to be using the power rule only when my polynomial is separated by addition and subtraction signs. Another important thing to note is that I should not have any variables in the denominator. If I do have a variable in the denominator, so say I have a function that has a term that looks like this, I'm going to need to rewrite that term so that it says x to the negative b in order to apply the power rule. The third thing is that I don't want any radical signs. So if there are any radical signs, what I'm going to have to do is take that radical and rewrite it as a fractional exponent. So a lot of times when you're looking at a function, you're going to need to use one of these two rules to rewrite f of x before you can take f prime. In order to use the derivative rule, your function or each term has to look like this, a number, a variable, and an exponent. Number, variable, exponent. There cannot be a variable in the denominator, and I cannot have any radical signs. Let's look at a couple of examples. Number one, find the derivative. When I look at this function, I notice right away that this term is of the form number, variable, exponent, and this term is of the form number, variable, exponent. All of my terms are separated by plus signs. There's no parentheses, which implies multiplication. There's no big fractions that implies some kind of division. All I have here that's concerning is the x in the denominator here and the x in the denominator here. So first and foremost, when I see something like this, I'm going to rewrite y. And it's important here to be careful with your notation so you know when you took a derivative and you know when you're still just rewriting the original function. So right now what I'm going to do is rewrite these two middle terms so they look like these last two, so number, variable, exponent. Since I'm rewriting y, I have to keep the 6x to the negative 2 because I'm not taking a derivative yet. Plus, the 7's in the numerator, so that stays here as a coefficient. To make this x cubed come up to the denominator, I rewrite that as x to the negative 3. I can do the same thing with the 4 over x. That becomes 4x to the negative 1. And then the 9x to the 5th stays. Now that all of my terms are of the form number variable exponent, now I can start taking the derivative. So when I start taking the derivative, that's when I start using the power rule, and I'm going to do exponent times the coefficient, subtract the exponent by 1. Since I'm now going to be writing a derivative, I now write y prime. Again, this notation is very important. You can't just take the derivative of some pieces and then leave the other pieces. It's not mathematically correct, and it'll become very confusing if you try to do that. So make sure that when you rewrite y, you have a y here. Once you start taking the derivative, you have y prime here. So now when I use the power rule, negative 2 times positive 6. So I get negative 12 x to the negative 3. Negative 3 times 7. That's negative 21. Subtract 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 1 times 4. So that's minus 4. x to the negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And then 5 times 9 is 45. So plus 45. 5 minus 4 is 1. x to the 4th. I'm going to rewrite these so that they all have positive exponents. Generally, we always want positive exponents in our final answer. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 12 over x cubed minus 21 over x to the fourth minus 4 over x squared plus 45 x to the fourth. Number two. When I look at the three terms that are in this function, I see that they're separated by subtraction and addition signs. So I know that I'm going to want to use the power rule here. But the issue that I have occurring are these radical signs. So I'm first going to need to rewrite y so that those radical signs are gone, and then I'll be able to take a derivative. The 6x to the 3 halves can stay just like that. And then I have minus 4x, and this is going to become to the 7 over 5 plus x to the 5 thirds. 
So I've just rewritten y so that all of my terms are of the form number variable exponent. Once all my terms look like that, that's when I can start taking a derivative. So now y becomes y prime. When I start using the power rule, exponent times coefficient. So six times three halves would be six times three, that's 18, divided by two, that's nine. So I have nine x, three halves minus one. You can think of that as three over two minus two over two, that gives us a half. So I have x to the positive half here. Minus, this is four times seven over five, so that's gonna be 28 over five x to the, okay, so 7 over 5 minus 1, that would be 7 over 5 minus 5 over 5, so that gives me 2 over 5. Plus, bring that exponent in front, I have 5 thirds x, again, I'm going to subtract 3 over 3 here, that gives me 2 over 3. I have all positive exponents, so I don't need to rewrite y prime like I did in number 1, so that's going to be my final answer. You can rewrite these so that they're in radical form. So for example, this would be 9 rad x. This would be the fifth root of x squared, etc. Or you can leave it as a fractional exponent. Either way is fine. The only thing that you should get into the habit of is definitely getting rid of the negative exponents and rewriting them as positive exponents. Let's look at two more examples using the power rule. Number three. I have x cubed over 2 plus x to the fourth over 3 minus x plus 2. Now, I don't have any variables in the denominator here, so I don't need to rewrite that. And I don't have any radicals, so I don't need to rewrite that either. However, this x cubed over 2 and the x to the 4th over 3 looks kind of weird. So it's nicer if we pull this out as a coefficient so that these two terms both look like we said in number 1 and number 2, where the term needs to be number variable exponent. So in that first term, I can pull out a half. That's my coefficient. So I have 1 half x cubed. In that second term, that's a third. So I can write 1 over 3x to the fourth minus x plus 2. Now I'm going to start taking a derivative. So 3 times a half is 3 halves. Subtract 1 from the exponent, x squared. Plus 4 times a third is 4 thirds. Subtract 1 to the third. Minus 1 times 1 gives me 1. And technically, this is an x to the 0. But I know that anything to the 0 is 1, so you'll see that normally I'm not going to write this x to the 0. I would just write minus 1. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of 2 is 0. The reason being this is really like a 2x to the 0. So if I do the exponent times the coefficient, 0 times 2 is 0. So that whole thing just goes away. So if I rewrite this, I'm going to have 3 halves x squared plus 4 thirds x cubed minus 1. Number four, this one looks a lot different than the first three that I've done. So in the other ones, I either had just a variable in one term in the denominator or a radical just in one spot. I didn't have this denominator for the whole entire function. What's nice about this one, though, is that since I only have one single term in the denominator, I can divide that one term into every term in the numerator and split this up. That will allow me to use the power rule. There's another differentiation technique called the quotient rule, which I could apply here, but it would get pretty messy. So whenever you see just one single term in the denominator, it's going to be your best bet to divide that single term into every term in the numerator and rewrite f of x and then just use the power rule as opposed to trying to use the quotient rule. So when I start to rewrite f of x, 6 cubed over x squared, I do 3 minus 2, right? I subtract those exponents when I'm dividing. So I get 6x minus x to the fifth divided by x squared. I have 4x cubed plus this rad x is really x to the 1 half. So when I do 1 half minus 2, that's the same thing as 1 half minus 4 over 2. So I get x to the negative 3 over 2 plus 1 divided by x squared, that would just be x to the negative 2. Now all of the terms in this function are number variable exponent. So now I can start applying the power rule. 1 times 6 is 6. Again, that x goes away. 4 times 3 is negative 12. Drop that exponent by 1, x squared. This is going to be a minus, right, because the negative 3 halves times a positive 1 is going to be negative 3 halves x to the, so negative 3 halves minus 1 is negative 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2. 
So that gives me negative 5 over 2. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. X to the negative 3. I just need to rewrite these two terms so that they have a positive exponent. So I'm going to be left with 6 minus 12x squared minus, there's a 3 in the numerator, there's a 2 in the denominator, and this variable is going to go into the denominator to make that exponent positive. So it's 3 over 2x to the 5 halves minus 2 over x to the positive 3. That's it for finding the derivative using the power rule. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.